This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Everybody, welcome to the ramble. Yeah, it's me, Alex. Doing the same old thing over and over and over again. Uh, but, uh, you know, we do it for the fun of it. And we will be doing the citizens panel in about 25 minutes from right now. But as we do every now and then, we go out and reach out to one of our comedy folk and uh, talk to them and see what they're having doing what's up do you i'm in radio i should be able to communicate what's up with their life all righty uh we're going to do something we like to do occasionally and we do it this way because we always like the surprise of how he answers the phone so let's make a call out to our old friend stephen pearl here we go hopefully it'll start ringing There we go. Hello, Scott Bale Fan Club. No member since 1980. <laughs> <laughs> please join. Please, please join. Please, Evo. Yeah, Scott Bale. Didn't he? Didn't wasn't he a Trump guy? Didn't he turn Yeah, out? big he's a big Trump guy, yeah. A big Trump he's guy. The only the only way he can get on TV, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Scott. I was behind him in line at Osh Hardware in LA one time and his credit card wouldn't go through and he was getting real mad. He tried it like three times and then I said to him I was right behind him, I go, That wouldn't happen to Fonzie and he <laughs> gave me a look like he wanted to <laughs> kick me in the nuts. And I looked at him like, Go ahead, go ahead, I will go down quickly and then the lawyers will call. <laughs> yeah. If I can get one swift punch at at Chachi Chachi. Oh, I, I'd let him take me down. Then I'd take his house. <laughs> it's the Jewish way. Yeah, no, no. It's it just, you know, I mean, come on. You know, here's a, guy, here's a guy who was nothing to begin with. And sure. uh, he's he's it's so jonesing for fame, you yep. know, that he has to, yep. uh, you know, kiss Donald Trump's ass. Yeah, it's pretty sad. Pretty sad. Yeah. Well, it's, yep. it's, it's <laughs> terrible being a has-been because I know. You know, it's, it's <laughs> we all know. Well, I'm I'm more of a never was, but that's good too. Yeah, but I, you know, well, I guess it is better to be a has been than a never was. But uh, I guess so. You know, you know what they say about me, Stephen Pearl, forgotten but not gone. But, but, <laughs> still no, here. you know, you know what I find is interesting is is how fast fame fades. You know, oh, quickly, I mean, quickly. You, if, if you're out of sight, out of mind, you know. No, no, and especially as it's true of television, uh, and and Chachi is a perfect example of that. I mean. Uh -huh. how, how popular was Scott Bale while he was on that show? Uh -huh. You know, exactly. A, a was, major was, celebrity. On the cover of Tiger Bag magazine a, every a, week. A major, a major celebrity. Okay, that's right. The minute uh -huh. he no longer had a TV show, he couldn't get a table <laughs> at any restaurant in L.A. Okay, yeah. So that that's what happens. And then if he got another series and he was big in it again. He'd be, yeah. he'd, be, he'd be a star all over again. Well, he yeah. had Charles in Charge, which did okay, and then that went off, and then there was nothing after that. So yeah. He kind of had two shots. And I know that Happy Days really went downhill once he was on it. Maybe it was a coincidence, maybe it wasn't. Well, but it, uh, well uh, I was it crap then. No, uh, I'll, I'll tell you when it started going down. Pinky Tuscadero. Oh, P.O. Oh, oh, Roz Kelly, the wonderfully unstable mental patient Roz Kelly. Is she really? Oh, didn't she like try? I'd say they put her away because she tried. She shot up a neighbor's car once, and she did all kinds of crazy stuff. Oh, so, really? Well, and uh, yeah, was... crazy Ross. They they replaced her quickly. Everybody on the cast hated her. So they, that's they... when they got Susie Quattro as Leather Tuscadero. Leather Tuscadero. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> equally as bad. <laughs> yeah, uh, this was when the show started really screaming for, oh. you know, trying to to rekindle its former glory. Yeah. Oh, that's what it started and, smelling and, like a dead anus on the road. Well, oh, man. we got a major, um, uh, what can we call it, uh, uh, a quote, a major um, uh, piece of philosophy out of okay. that show, and that was the <laughs> philosophy of jumping the shark. 
Oh, that's right. Now you know well, everybody, 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 every, everybody out there talks about somebody. Oh, that, that really jumped the shark. You know? Yeah. And and most people don't know where that came from, but it came from uh-huh. the fact that they, what was it? They they decided they they had to put some pizzazz into the show, so yeah. they had the Fonz drive his motorcycle over a shark tank. No, actually, he water skied over a shark. Oh, tank is that it? A that water ski over a shark there tank from the California kid. Yeah. And uh, that <laughs> episode, so that episode, they say, was the episode that started taking Happy Days into the toilet. I think it became yeah. their last <laughs> season. Jump the and tank. so they always refer to anything like that afterwards as, aren't we jumping the shark with that one? Yeah. That's, you know? yeah. <laughs> and that's where it came from. Uh, yeah. Uh, but that was a show that was very popular for, oh, maybe two or three seasons, something like that. Yeah, yeah, it came on in seventy four, I think seventy seven and seventy eight. It was in, in uh, it was on until eighty four. Yeah, but it really stung for like the last six or seven years or whatever. And the only thing, the only, the only thing that uh, came out of that was Robin Williams with Mork and Mindy because there you go, that's right. He uh, played an alien called Mork who came to Earth yep. on Happy Days, and uh, that was yep. kind of the pilot for Mork and Mindy. That's right. Which, if there was no Mork and Mindy, there might have never been a Robin Williams. So, That's right. You know. he'd, be, he'd be opening for me at Irving's Pizza Joint. Now the, now, the, now, the point is that this show, Happy Days, was piloted on another show. That uh, was, yes, Love American Style, am I right? I think, yeah, Love American Style was called uh, Love and the Happy Days, I think, or something like that. Yeah, was the title of the movie. episode. And they, they, right. they piloted the show by doing kind of full well uh, love american style were vignettes uh, three vignettes yes. in an hour and so one of the vignettes was happy days and that was the pilot yeah yeah it was an episode or uh, it was the early 50s and ronnie howard's parents had a tv and a girl pretended she liked them so she could watch the tv and i think the only people from the happy days show later on in it were ron howard and anson williams who played posse yeah he had different parents in it and uh, it, was a, it was a yeah kind of a pilot Last vignette thing. And I think it's interesting that, that uh, Ron Howard, I don't think he's used anybody from Happy Days in any of his movies. Uh, Maybe he hated him. <laughs> I don't think he ever did there a movie. There scum. He never did a movie with Robin Williams, did he? I don't think so. I don't but, think he uh, ever don't directed quote me on one. that. I don't know much about yeah. the, what's going on in yeah. Hollywood. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, good old Ron Howard. Now, there was a kid who, you know, oh. I, I always used to like to... Uh, uh, a little trivia question about naming children who grew up in movies and became adults, and then we saw them as adults in movies where they were successful, and maybe we even saw them in on television and in movies until their death. So from cradle uh-huh. to grave, they were in the public eye. Yeah. And there are very few of those you can name, but for instance... Mickey Rooney is a good example. Mickey Rooney, Jackie Cooper. Jackie, he was around forever. Ja- Jackie Cooper. He was around forever. People are going, who's Jackie Cooper? Well, he, look it up. Google it, you he, kids. He, I ain't got time he, to explain he, it to you. He, 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 well, he played Perry White on, in, on, in Superman. That was his m- m- most recent thing before his death. Yeah. Uh, but, he, you know, Jackie Cooper was around for years playing one role or another and started out as a kid. Wound up as an adult, yep. wound up as an old guy in Superman, and, and yep. you know, uh, we grew up with him. I'll tell you another he one. We were. He was one of the little rascals in the 50s. He was Hennessy. Remember that show? Right. And uh, he's yeah. always around doing something. Uh, Bobby Blake. Robert Blake. Yeah, that's right. Good old messed up <laughs> Bobby Blake. Uh, the first Robert time Cuff. you'll ever see him in a movie is if you go watch the movie Treasure of Sierra <laughs> Madre. And there's yeah. this Mexican kid who comes up to John Huston, who plays a cameo yeah. in the movie he directed, and the kid's asking him for money. And that's Bobby Blake, who that's later right. who, Bobby Blake. who later went on to, are you ready for this, to be in the Red Rider serials in the movies as yeah. Little Beaver. Yeah. <laughs> 
And then, um, you know, one thing led to another, and uh, he wound up uh, wound up in movies, and then he wound up, uh, he was in, uh, in fact, he was in the Truman Capote film in Cold Blood. He's one of the two murderers. Oh, yeah, yeah. one of the two guys, Perry Smith, he played. And, and uh, uh, then, of course, he went on to Beretta. And, uh, Beretta. And, he, was also, know, he was also a little rascal in the later Our Gang series when Spanky was 35 and still hanging out with Shorts. So let's put on a show. <laughs> yeah, so, so, <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean. Alfalfa, put the gun down. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So there was a there was a guy who who we saw through his entire life. And, yep. you know, we can pretty well I mean, at least it was in her teens, I think, when she first started making movies was Elizabeth Taylor. Yeah. How, how, you know, we saw her from from that period as a as a teenager to her death. And I'm wondering, wait, did she ever appear as a child in any films? No. Now the one that has National Velvet, the best one was fourteen or whatever. Another one you could name was Natalie Wood. Natalie Wood, there you go. She was the little kid in Miracle on Thirty Fourth Street. That's right. And then, uh, then of course, the next time we saw her to any fame was in uh, in uh, what do you call it? Uh, 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 Rebel Without a Cause. Yep. And you know, then she she did things. like The Searchers with John Wayne, which is maybe John yep. Wayne's greatest film. Uh, and uh, we go on and on. She she grows up. She becomes a du- uh, adult. Bob, Ted, Carol, and Alice, or whatever that movie was. And, you know, a whole bunch of things. And then uh, Glub Glub. Glug, glug. Then her last appearance was at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean, my friend. And then she gives me the water that's been around since I have been. And I was hot for her. Boy, I tell you, I, I oh, who wasn't man? She was gorgeous. I was so pissed off when she died because it was for no fucking reason, man. Right, right. Holy shit! I would have fucking fucked the corpse. Jesus, she was beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I, I yeah. got a shovel and a ticket to Hollywood. There's an old saying that uh, she probably looked better five days dead than we do right now. You know? Yeah, so, damn right. She probably looks good now. Even the worms go. I don't want to eat that. Yeah, That's a nice face. Let's yeah, just hang out here. Uh, so Poor there was Natalie. there was another she one. I'm fight. trying to think. Uh, oh. Here we go. I got one for you. Got one for you. Okay. This one will this this is this is really amazing. Rosemary. Do you remember Rosemary? Oh, she God was bless a, Rosemary, all hundred and ninety eight years of her. She was around forever, man. She was around forever and she she worked the uh, people remember from the Dick Van Dyke show, you know. Uh yep. she was a, a a major character on that show, and then she appeared in a lot of other things. But she started out as are you ready? Baby I Rosemary. Know. Baby Rosemary. And she sang. I am four years old. You got a chest uh, appeal? No, wait a minute. She sang jazz. She yeah, was, she fair. was, I got to tell you, she was amazing. Because you get this wow. little kid. She was like, I don't know, nine years old, eight years old, whatever. And she'd come out and start singing like, like Ella. You know? I mean, yeah. Wow, it, it man. It was <laughs> just amazing. And that was Baby. Wow, they called her Baby Rosemary. Baby. Maybe I saw an old film of her. I think she was standing on a piano singing or well, piano. There's or a something film like that. called International House with W. C. Fields that I know she's in. Oh S- yeah, singing. Cab Calloway sings Reefer Man in it. That's a good film. Yeah, yeah. So um yeah. So we're, here we are talking about this stuff that probably only you and I know about. Yeah, well fuck 'em. Everybody's <laughs> going listen and learn, punks. Rosemary It's your past, it's the roots. Baby Rosemary? Who the fuck was Babe. Baby Rosemary? Maybe Rosemary. Who's later Rosemary? We don't know that either. We don't know later da-da-da, Rosemary. Da-da-da, da-da-da, da-da-da. Yeah. I mean, and one star that unfortunately won't go away is Corey Feldman. Go away, Corey. Go away. Your music's horrible. You it, had your day. Go away. Stay in your house with your money and your girl. I, you, go away. Uh, here's, here's, my, here's, here's my brush with fame. I went to a party one night at the house of Corey Feldman's father. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky you. That's like and meeting Frank Sinatra was, Jr. And I was there with Ron Jeremy. How's that for a, a double Oh, I know one? Ron. I like Ron. Crazy yeah. old two-foot-long cock, Ron. Yeah, two-foot-long cock. <laughs> we call him two-foot. Hey, two-foot, how you doing? Well, it's about two inches now. But, you know, he's... Two said, inches. Hey, he's old. What do you want? He can't... Yeah, he but, hasn't seen it in years. But he had his day, baby. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, he put him away like there was no tomorrow. Bada-bing, bada-boom, bada-boom, next, bada-bing, bada-boom, next, bada-bing, bada-bing, he was busy. Ron Jeremy is a perfect example of a guy who was the biggest self-promoter I've ever met in my life. Yep. You know? So whatever success he had, he deserved. Okay? And and, yeah. and there's nothing wrong with that. 
Uh, nope. uh, but no, he, God he, bless. I, I like. I've always liked Ryan. I think he's doing stand-up comedy now. I don't know. If I remember it was now, four. <laughs> it was four o'clock in the morning, in a parking lot in Los Angeles. After he and I and my girlfriend made the rounds, that's when we went to Corey Feldman's father's party, and then we went out to see the um, in Pasadena the Rocky Horror Picture Show where all the people playing the various parts and the cosplay of it and so on oh, well, yeah, were sure. like porn yeah, people. Were porn people. Uh, and, <laughs> and then we wound up at 4 o'clock in the morning uh, standing out in the back of uh, Ron Jeremy's car where he parked it. And his car was always a... Uh, he never bought a car. He rented a wreck. Do you remember Rent-A-Wreck? Sure, Rent-A-Wreck. I've used them uh, when I was in Hawaii. Yeah, we rented a wreck. <laughs> yeah. So he, he had a rent a wreck and uh, he uh, he opens up the trunk of his car and he's got all these albums of pictures and and every single uh, press clipping that he's been in in ah. his life and he's going through <laughs> them now and telling us all about them and my girlfriend uh, at the time uh, called her Schmoody uh, Kathleen. Uh, uh, thought it was wonderful up to a point, but about an hour later, while we're still looking at all these clippings, she's going, can we go? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wait a minute. Then I was in the big dicks of Danville in 1969. But, you know, it's amazing how famous Ron Jeremy came, became, basically yep. because he was a troll doing porn. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I mean, in the beginning, in the early days, I knew him from the early uh, days. I knew him in the very beginning of his career. And he oh, was wow. not, not a bad-looking uh, guy. He was kind of burly. But he was not a yeah. bad-looking guy. And yeah. and he just kept in it until he got fat and disgusting and, yeah. and whatever. And then yeah. every, everybody, like, rooted for Ron because they were going, he's in porn. I'm going to root <laughs> for him because he's like me. I'm a troll, too. You know, uh, yeah, he's an everyman. And, and there, there was a rumor in Hollywood for years in, in the porn business that what they would uh, do to test out a porn actress to make sure she had what it took is they would bring in Ron. Yeah. <laughs> and and they felt if she could fuck him, she, she could fuck anybody in the she porn. Could fuck industry. anybody, anybody, even a rhinoceros, and they've used those too. Yeah. So. Oh anyway. my God! I, yeah, we're, we're now Ron looks like a cross between David Crosby and a large penguin. God bless. Yeah, yeah, David Crosby. I like. I've always liked Ron. Yeah. <laughs> no, Ron's a, good, Ron's a good boy. A, Ron's a very nice guy. He's you know, a super there's nice nothing. Guy. I always like him. I don't know anybody that has anything evil to say about Ron nah, Jeremy. That's his, yeah. porno's his gig, and now I guess stand up is his gig, and you know, I wish him well. And I so, uh, often i i have I have been a person who has always uh, felt um, uh, a certain envy of a person like that because. I'm sure that out there, uh, there are people who have nothing good to say about me. You know, <laughs> so when you have somebody well, they, who, if, which, if, if, there's, if they are, then you've succeeded. That's how I look well, at it. Well, I mean, where you have somebody who nobody, you know, um, uh, has anything bad to say about him. Uh, God bless him, man. He's a better man than yep. I am. You know, he's a good person. That's yeah, poor knows his gig and uh, what's his gig and uh, whatever his gig is. I wish him luck on the gig. I don't think he, is gig he young. still doing it. You know, he had that. Well, I know. I don't think so, but I don't know. I don't. I never really followed that world. He had that heart attack, right? It was like a heart attack yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, 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 they fixed yeah, him up, but, but now he's uh, yeah, and they fixed him up. Uh, he almost died. And they fixed yeah, him up, that. and now he's still going strong. I mean, but I don't—I I haven't seen him doing porn lately. I think he finally, <sighs> you know, uh, I finally decided that that had passed him by. Well, there's got to be a market for grandpa porn, so maybe he's doing that. And not telling the, anybody, there is know. there is grandpa porn. I'm sure there's got to be the, grandma, the, granny porn. There's got to be grandpa. No, porn. you'll you'll love it. It, it. It's a bunch of old guys, probably in their <laughs> late sixties, early seventies. And they bring in really young women. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. That sounds good. And and they fuck them. And the name of the series is The Blue Pill Men. Uh, the Blue Pill. I'm going to be one of them in a few years. I'll and, one now. In every episode, they take a Viagra and then they fuck these women. Mm, it's hysterical. <laughs> There's a big market for that. I want to. I want a commercial on midnight TV. I mean, I you know, and they they have some granny porn. 
I mean, they have some old women. I mean, I don't want to watch My friend Blue it. Iris did granny porn. I don't want to watch it. Blue Iris. I don't want to watch it. I mean, you know. Uh, be, no, be, I've, I've never seen I, it. I don't because it, because <laughs> I'm living it, you know. So. Oh, hey, there you go. <laughs> I'll be, I'll be dead before I'm doing Granny Pollen. I mean, my, my wife is a very attractive woman who uh-huh. uh, still has a, a pretty uh, amazing body, okay, uh, for her age, which is uh-huh. near mine. Uh, yep. and, and yet, you know, I don't want to see a person that old in porn. I'm sorry. You know. Yeah, no, don't need it. Don't need it. No, varicose veins. No, thank you. No, no, fan, fan. Get away, get away. <laughs> excellent driver yeah yeah but i you know have are you do you watch porn at all i've seen it but it's never been my cup of tea i'd rather do it it's kind of like for me having a roommate watching him get laid you know? <laughs> or seven roommates and watching them get laid because you know yeah porno just, he never did it for me well, so I, I, uh, I, you know yeah. i'd rather do it i know i watched a lot of porn i uh and there was a point in my life this is this is true ladies and gentlemen and please don't spread the rumor around too much where I wanted to be the king of porn. <laughs> I wanted to be the porn king. Oh, my God. Uh, I don't know why. I, I, and this was when I was in New York. That's why I started Midnight Blue. Uh. I wanted, There was some part of me that wanted to be the porn king. I wanted to be known as the king of all porn. Move over, Al Goldstein. There's a new sheriff in town. <laughs> yeah, and I never got around to it because the radio thing was going too well, and I didn't want to ruin my reputation. But I did Midnight Blue, go. which was not porn exactly, but it was close. And uh, uh, but I don't know. I just I just thought there was something about that field that I liked, you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> well, and well, well there's, getting there's, laid. There's a part about so that bad. field I dislike. You know, I kept saying to people in the business, I said, why do you why do you act like you're in porn? Why do you try to be <laughs> sleazy and pornographic? Uh, because all the guys were just kind of sleazy guys, the guys running it and doing it. Yeah. And I said, you know, I said to Al Goldstein, lose some weight, put on a nice uh, suit, you know, L- yeah. defy their expectations <laughs> of what a porn king is. You know? Yeah, yeah. And, he, was, he was a grubby guy. And they do, they didn't. I mean, Al Goldstein was this fat guy smoking a cigar who looked like he made porn. There you right? go. <laughs> but, but here was the funny part about it. He was also one of the brightest men I've ever known. And uh-huh. people would then go on a TV show with him to debate him, and they'd think, oh, well, this is, this is nothing but a sleazy, fat, cigar-smoking porn guy. And then he would take him out to the cleaners. He would just uh, run rings around him, and he taught me a very important aspect of uh, of, of taking criticism. <clears throat> he said, "People come up to me and they say things like, how would you like your kid to watch your porn yeah. stuff or read Screw Magazine?'" And his answer, logical as hell, was to look back at them and go, "I don't make Screw Magazine for kids my son's age." Ah, there you go. You know, so I wouldn't want him to watch, look at it because I don't make it for him. Uh-huh. Uh, and, <laughs> you know, and he would always, what he would do is if somebody said something to him, he would walk into the argument rather than try and, you know, excuse it or whatever. He'd walk right into it. And he yeah. taught me the best way to debate is to walk into an argument, not to try and excuse it. All right, or or to say, well, yeah. I'm not really a pornographer. I'm doing art. No, nah, that's bullshit. You say, <laughs> yeah. I'm doing pornography. You know, yep. there, there's a need for it. People buy it. You know, they people wouldn't be buying it if there wasn't a need for it. There you go. So you know, uh, but I, uh, you know, so I wanted to be the porn king, but I never was. There you go. I, I, I once went to a bar in L.A. where like the, all the porno people hung out. I, did, I was curious, and I was friendly with the young a lady who was involved in it. So I went. And they were very nice people, but a lot of them were mental cripples, man. They were idiots. And one of them, they were talking about, like, they're real, in real showbiz. Well, when I shot that cue ball out of my pussy, it was a real dramatic stretch for me. Oh, my God. Yeah, well, I, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, my worst, my worst time, the worst thing that ever happened to me when I was doing Midnight Blue was I get, got invited to a lot of these uh, swingers parties, these orgies. 
you know? Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. And so I would go to them, not, you know, not really to have sex with anybody. And if I did, I would pull them off into a corner and not join the group because, you know, I don't want to toe up my nose while I'm fucking somebody. And I go to this one house and I go into the big room where everybody's fucking and I look down at the group and they're in the middle of them fucking his brains out is Erwin Corey. Remember Professor Erwin Corey? <laughs> God bless Erwin Corey. Oh, no, man. The last Still going thing, to the 102. The last thing, he's dead now, finally. Oh, yeah. Uh, Why? It took, took him a century to kill him. I think 102, yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. He's uh, like that Rose Kennedy age. Right? He was a big comic, folks, and very funny. One of the funniest I've ever yep. seen. And he, um, uh, there he is on the floor here, there, fucking his brains out. So, yeah. And I'm going, God I'm bless going, God I, bless. I, I, I think I've got to stop coming to these things. This is, this is too off putting. Yeah. This is like, <laughs> this is like walking in and seeing your mother being fucked, you know? Yeah, I mean, exactly. Oh, there's Marty Allen getting a blowjob. <laughs> oh, oh, wonderful. God. And Hello I, there. Well, before me, before we keep going with this list of just <laughs> disgusting, vile um, um, uh, images, I think we better call it quits. Yeah, I think we've uh, people have gone blind already listening to this. So. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, say goodbye to the lovely Stephen Pearl. Thank you very much. Wonderful to be here. See you next time. This is GabNet. The Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, everybody. How are you? I'm Alex Bennett, and this is The Ramble. And uh, thanks to Stephen Pearl for joining us. Journey us. Uh, he is uh, he's a lot of fun. I, I, you know, I got to quit wearing caps because when I, I'm like that, you can't, can't see my eyes. And when you can't see my eyes, you can't see whether I'm telling the truth or not. Uh, but anyway, let me uh, let me go here. Oh, I didn't uh, I didn't uh, put in uh, I didn't turn on the um, the Skype. So let me because every time I reboot, it makes me re-sign in here. You hear that? Boom! And uh, th that means that uh, in just a moment, as soon as I turn this thing on, there we go. We're online uh, with uh, people uh, so that they can call us using Skype. That's how we how we do this little program, uh, and people can call us. Now, if you want to figure out how to call us and all of that, all the information you would ever want to know is over there at gabnet.net. That's uh, gabnet.net. Uh, and uh, over on the right-hand side of the page, tell you all about the Citizens Panel, how to be part of it, and how to... How to join it. And uh, the first guy to call tonight, ladies and gentlemen, is Mike. Hello, Mike. How are you this hey, evening? Good, good. You know, you, you were saying about Ron, uh, uh, Ron Howard. You know, his brother was in the Anna Griffin show he, also. Uh, well, uh, yeah, but uh, he more than that, he's more famous than that. He was in that movie. Uh, I can't think of the movie offhand. No, he's in a lot of movies. So was his father. So was the father, by the way. Clint, uh, not Clint. Uh, uh, what was his father's name? He appeared in a lot. You've seen him in a lot of movies. But uh, no, um, uh, Clint Howard is who you're thinking of, the brother of Ron Howard. And yeah. the first time anybody here ever saw him is if you remember an episode, one of the early episodes of Star Trek. There was a, um, a, a a being living on this spaceship that they think is this big monster because he's got this monstrous face, but that's just a puppet he's using. That basically he's just a little kid, and that was Clint Howard. I'll be darned! I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, he continued to use Clint in a lot of his stuff. Good to him, you know. Not a great actor, you know, but. Uh, but then again, neither was Ron Howard's. <laughs> you know, it's, True. Yeah. But when he was a little kid, Clint was, with a peanut butter sandwich, walking around like, like some? You know, like peanut butter sandwich? No, kid, get away from me. What was that on again? Andy Griffith, he had, when mm -hmm. he was a little kid. Yeah. yeah. Peanut butter sandwich. Well, so a lot walking of around, a lot, walking around with peanut butter sandwich. A lot of times, uh, sisters have been used... 
uh, sisters or brothers have been used to play the younger version of the other actor. Uh, for instance, uh, Lana Wood was Natalie Wood's sister. And what movie was she in that Natalie Wood was also in? Oh, the Great Rap, wasn't it? No. She played the younger version of Natalie Wood. Very famous film. One of the, one of the considered one of the greatest films that John Ford ever made. Hmm. I don't remember. The Searchers. She played. Oh, she played the young Natalie Wood. You remember uh, John Wayne goes out looking for Natalie Wood, who's been kidnapped by the Indians, uh, and he. The whole picture is him spending years of his life looking for her, and he finally finds her. And of course, it's Natalie Wood. But when she's younger, uh, it was played by Lana Wood. So, I'll be darned. Yeah. So that's a case of a brother and sister act, or a sister and sister act, rather. Yeah. Uh, years ago, I got a chance down in Vegas to see Phyllis Diller doing her, her show mm -hmm. on stage. Oh, my God, that woman is nuts. What? Yeah. Is she still alive now? Is she? No, 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 no. She, she passed died. away. She died. Did you like her 90s? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, what people uh, don't know about her is I, I knew of her as the music director at KSFO in San Francisco, music librarian at KSFO in San Francisco. I'll be darn. Yeah. I always wonder if she, her husband was still alive. What? Thang, thing, or whatever his, her husband's uh, person, name was. Well, he referred to, he was referred to as Fang, yeah, by her, <laughs> you know, but... Um, I enjoyed your trip uh, to uh, Vermont. Those were pretty pictures. Yeah, it's it's very nice up there. I'm, I you know it's not very good radio, but it it made for pretty good television. So you know. Uh, anyway, I've been joined here by uh, let's see here. here here we go Jeff. Hi Jeff. Hey. How are you? Good evening. Okay, he's framing himself. See see how these people become pros on this program? They frame themselves and everything. You know. I yeah, so. Praying everybody. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, let me see here. I, yeah, the, the, the lot of, uh, lot of uh, brother and sister acts in the business. Uh, the, the most famous one, I think, was Joan Fontaine, which most people don't know who I'm talking about, and her sister, uh, who was, uh, what's her name, who was in Gone with the Wind, um, Olivia de Havilland. Uh, and they were they were sisters, uh, and uh, supposedly, uh, at least uh, towards the end of their life, never spoke to each other, hated each other. And uh, uh, Olivia de Havilland, I think, did she die first, or was it Fontaine that went first? It might have been Fontaine that went first, and de Havilland went at something like 102. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that was another two sisters working in the business. You know, you had a lot of a lot of siblings that uh, that worked, and some were more successful than the others. Yeah. So anyway, well, that's our show for tonight, folks, because nobody's calling with anything else. Uh, yeah. I remember the two Hungarian girls. Well, actually, there were three of them. That's what I remember, but I never, yeah. I never saw. Them. There, there was, uh, there was Eva, there was Zsa Zsa. And there was Magda. And I don't know if Magda was either the mother or another sister. I'm trying to remember now. But uh, that was the, you know. The Gabor sisters. The Gabor sisters, yeah. Yeah. Uh, only one of which had any one of a kind of a major career. I mean, Zsa, Zsa never had a big career. Uh, but she somehow made a career out of being Zsa, Zsa. So... She used to be on TV a lot. Uh, well, Zsa Zsa was... Zsa Even though she wasn't an actor, I, she was... I, I, you see, I could say to you, name me uh, name me two movies that Zsa Zsa Gabor was in, and you probably can't. The, uh, the, uh, the Queen of... Um... Well, Queen of Outer Space, very good. Very good. 
Well, I don't know. Was that Jaja or was that Ava? No, that no, was, it was Jaja. Jaja. Because uh, we always yeah. laugh because of her, uh, the makeup they put on her after she lift off her mask. Yeah. So he goes, oh, my God, that's what you call one hell of a lousy face yeah. lift. <laughs> Hello, Scott. Uh, the, the, um, the, the picture that I was, the, the, she probably is most known for, there are two pictures she's, she's known for that. That's that. For some reason, that's the film that is her, her, the one that lives after her. But she was in Touch of Evil, Orson Welles' Touch of Evil. And she was in, what was the other picture that she was in that I remember her being in? Um, but I know she was in Touch of Evil. She was playing the uh, owner of, female owner of a brothel in Tijuana. Uh, uh, so that was, that, was, that was probably her biggest dramatic role because she was working for Orson Welles. So uh, it looks like the uh, the papers are released, and Alex, you killed Kennedy, huh? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, right. Right. Oh, jeez. Yep, yep. Well, I've been saying for years to shut everybody up that I did it, you know. Yeah. I, I figured that, you know, okay, it's all over with now. I did it. Shut the fuck up. Because I yeah. got so sick and tired of everybody sitting around and... Um, bitching about who killed Kennedy and how Kennedy was killed and all the various schemes, uh, not the least of which were, I guess, men coming from outer space and things like that. You know, real, real weird scenarios of how Kennedy was killed. Now, I know the papers were released. Did they discover anything? Uh, I, I, I didn't listen to well, the Well, they've been released, but nobody's had a chance to really read them yet. And, and... If there is anything juicy, it's going to be held off for six months. Well, I, you know, there's a couple of papers that they're not going to release that uh, they held back. And those were the ones that said, Mike helped you kill Kennedy. <laughs> I beg your pardon. I was only a kid at that time. Yeah, likely excuse. Yeah, that's a likely excuse. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Phil, Phil did it. Yeah, you were hey, never what? a kid, Mike. Well, I remember. I remember. And I was thinking tonight of doing the same thing on this show. Of, mm -hmm. uh, of of whole shows where people would call up, you know, with these. Uh, the two things that, I, that we used to get calls on, one that I kind of started was his, uh, the Paul is Dead rumor, right? Mm -hmm. Number nine. Yeah? Huh? Number nine. Yeah, number nine, number nine. And then um, the, the other one was whenever you would get on the Kennedy assassination, uh, people would go nuts with it. And they'd be going nuts with me because I had the most controversial idea of what happened. That Oswald okay, did it. Did. That Oswald oh. did it. Yeah. And and in That's and I'm saying. telling you that if you said that back then, that was you, you were the people would call up and say you're an idiot and you're a fraud and how can you say that uh, Oswald did it? And I'm going, well, you know, he was up there in that building and he did have a rifle and well i mean he's the best suspect hello tony hey what's up you know he's the best possible suspect in this whole uh, whole damn scenario so uh you know uh, from I, what i heard uh the little snippets i heard they yeah. basically uh concur uh the commission said oswald did it you know and uh, he worked uh alone yeah, and and people try and and come up with these um, uh, with these these uh, theories of uh, how could he do it? How could you shoot three bullets and and hit have them hit perfectly? You know, and that uh, then uh, when Kennedy was shot, his head went back, and uh, the depository was in back of him. Wouldn't his head have gone forward and all of that? And uh, a lot of people don't understand ballistics. They don't understand how these things can happen. And people say, you know, I mean, it would have to be a fluke. Well, that's what flukes are, you know. I mean, the fact that this guy shot off three rounds and he hit his target, what, every time? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's so, crazy. You're right. Think except for Umbrella kicks. Man. Huh? Uh, uh, Umbrella Man. They thought that uh, he had... Oh, uh, remember the guy in the grassy knoll? Or, you think so? Oh, here we go. See, Tony, Tony's starting up with the grassy knoll bullshit. Remember they said there was all the people? And that's interesting. Well, all you got to do is go to Dallas and outside the museum in the grassy knoll, they have nothing but 
They've got all those guys lined up all along the outside with their conspiracy theories. Yeah, yeah. Like little booths. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute, Scott got a haircut. It's about no. time. No, yeah. he got them all cut. No, he probably just, I don't know. Ah, oh, so oh, 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 oh. He's, he's got a ponytail. I used to have a ponytail. He's coming through his Years stage. ago. <laughs> you don't just get one haircut anyway. Yeah. You get them all cut. Yeah. Well, you know. Um, I, I, of course, don't have a full head of hair anymore. Uh, but who gives a shit? Yeah. I've got, I got the widow's peak going now, I think. I'm starting oh, to lose I'm feeling myself. really sorry for you. But look, I mean, uh, uh, Jeff... Without hair plugs, still has a good, you have a pretty good head of hair for a guy your age. You know? Phil got the plugs. I can't believe that. Yeah. Well, Phil got the plugs, but. Uh, Did you tell Alex how much the hair cost? I couldn't get over that. I'm sure he knows. And, you know, uh, some people spend a lot more. You know, I think I spent about 12 grand. That, that's 12, not, that's, you spent 12 grand on the hair? That's not a lot. No. Really? No, oh if, he, if he had decided to wear hair pieces, he would have spent that much money over the years on hair pieces. I, I saw uh, I saw Burt Reynolds uh, on face on Facebook. You know, it was one of those then and now things. You know how uh, actors have changed. Man, his hairpiece is bad. I know when he was younger, his hairpiece looked pretty good, but that was probably before Here, HD. Here's the problem. Let me tell let me tell you a few people who had hair pieces, right? Yeah. And then you're gonna go. They had, not, right? they had hair pieces. Yeah. You know, Humphrey Bogart had a hair piece. Really, but you look at him and you say it doesn't look like a hair piece because he's got a widow's peak and everything. In those days, when they did hair pieces, they tried to make them look real. They didn't suddenly try to turn you into a beetle, you know. Uh, you know? I mean, guys lose their hair, and instead of saying, "Okay, well, give me one that makes me look like slightly like I'm balding," which then people will buy the fact that that's your hair, you know. They yeah. go and they get something where they got bangs going and the big fluffy pompadour <laughs> yeah. and all of that. Yeah. And I'm supposed to believe. I'm supposed to like, believe you that. You want to attack them when it's his. That's <laughs> their hair. Figure, the guy's got no testosterone. He's all estrogen. Oh, estrogen. Also, the worst are, are the yeah. guys. Who, and I did it for a long time. And finally, Marjorie is the one who talked me out of it. Uh, are the guys who color their hair? Yeah. And oh, I didn't think you would color your hair. What? I didn't think you would call you. You did it? Oh, I did it for a long time. But, oh, know. you know, the, but, trouble, uh, the trouble with coloring your hair is these guys yeah. color it, and it's just black, right? Well, come on. Huh? Even even guys who have the natural colored hair and it's dark hair have gray, little gray pieces in it, you know? So would you leave a little like gray like that? No, I didn't. Oh. And none of these guys you leave do. a little to make it look like you had a little gray. And, and my, more, I tried it a few times, and it uh, and it it looked like uh, I have brown hair, so really? it, it kind of looked orange, uh, you know. <laughs> oh Caesar oh no, that's no, that's what happened. Your hair turned purple, yeah. or it turned orange, or it turned any number of different colors. Yes, right. my 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 uh, dad's stepbrother he used to dye his hair all the time. Really? It did it jet black. So my mother asked him, Herman, who does your hair? Only my hairdresser knows. <laughs> oh, I mean, his hair was dark. I mean, it was black, but uh, yeah, black well, as a uh, Phil's shirt. It, then you probably, it probably was, it was colored. If it was, oh, it was colored. It was colored. God, yeah. it was terrible. You know, and um, I, uh, two lessons I learned is finally, I when I finally did it, didn't color it. So now it's, you know, it's it's gray. Uh, no, it's flesh. Uh, uh, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about the stuff on the side, okay, Phil? Yeah. <laughs> Which side? Uh, I'm I'm sorry. <laughs> That's another nautical term. <laughs> well, I get a cup very short sometimes, and it almost looks like I'm totally like you know, cue ball, ball, yeah. right? Um, Tell. Alice bold, huh? Yeah. I don't know why. I'll tell you. I go. I still go to a barber. I go to these guys here in uh, in uh, uh, Harlem, uh, and it's it's like those barber shops in the barber shop movies, uh, only maybe a little dirtier, you know. Yeah. And and 
uh, it was, uh, I get the, my hair cut there, and uh, they, it, they show you pictures on the wall. What do you want? A number one, a number two, a number three, and a for length. Uh, and I, uh, who, uh, who's the guy that's I, something the entertainer that's in those movies? Cedric. Cedric the entertainer. Does he cut your hair? <laughs> he should. No, but anyway, so I go yeah, down to these guys. Like that I don't. I get a different guy every time. I, it's the guy who's available at the moment. Okay. Yeah. And so I, that's you're very used, loyal. Used I to be. I, I used to go to a place down the street that I paid like twenty dollars plus a five dollar tip to get a haircut. And all they did was the same thing these guys are doing for 12 bucks. okay? Well, they saw you coming, and they said, hey, get 20 bucks from the white guy. We usually charge 12 but, uh... Oh, no, no, no. no. There, was, there, was a, there was a woman who tried to uh, create uh, a, a barbershop, a literal barbershop, that was a nice, really nice barbershop. And uh, she's charged like 20 bucks for just a haircut. And it, but then she got she went out of business because everybody all the all the black dudes in the neighborhood go to these uh, skeezy okay. barbers because they're social, they're they're kind of a social thing, right? Yeah. It's like in the movie barber shop. They, yeah. They're like a, a social meeting place, and there are people in there. They're just talking to each other. They're not even getting haircuts. They'll hang know? around, yeah. Right. So uh, uh, I, well, she went out of business because she wasn't one of these and nobody wanted to go to those. So I'm stuck now with one uh, close to me here and then one a little over the, uh, the other way. And that one, the w one that was nearest to me, I, I just felt they didn't like me because I was white. Oh. You know, I really I got, you know, you, you get that feeling. And uh, so I went to another place that was even skeezier than this one. But at least they treat me nice. You know, hey, you come out over here. Yeah, zip, zip. You know, and they take out the clippers and they just. But then I wonder, why don't I just do it myself? What What are they doing that's magic? You know? Yeah. Except, except they put a little cloth over me and some tissue paper around my neck and. But then it's zip, 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 and I think I could do that myself, or I could have Marjorie do it. You know. What about Nair? Only if you... If, oh, it takes hair off, doesn't it? What? Nair? No, I, I, for, is Nair it? is a, what they call a depilatory. And women used to use it on their legs. I don't know if they still use it. But they used to use it on their legs, and what it does is it just kind of what dissolves the hair or something like yeah, that. Right. You know? yeah. And uh, but it was very caustic, yeah. uh, and I think some women, you know, they're like I stopped doing coloring my hair because I found that the the hair dyes were uh, uh, really kind of hurting my skin. I mean, underneath it, I, for a couple a couple of burn it. huh? Burn it? No, it didn't burn it. It it just itched like crazy for a couple of days, and it was it, it wasn't pleasant. So I, I when I stopped doing it, I, at least I didn't have to deal with that. And finally, you know, so far as uh, 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 you know, going bald, um, when I, I, I you know I started to go bald in my forties. I mean, to where you would call it getting bald. Okay. You were receding. I don't. Uh, yeah, I was That's receding. I'm receding. And and um, uh, so I mean, I looked. Um, um, you know, it was starting to go, and finally, it started to go some more and some more. And uh, I would still go. I went to Vidal Sassoon to get my hair cut every week, and people were going, "Why are you spending that to, you know, give the kind of haircut that you normally get?" You know. You don't have that. Now, Howard you, didn't cut your hair. N no, Howard didn't. I think once, maybe. Oh, he worked for Vidal Sassoon for a short yeah. time. But anyway, yeah. so I get now my hair cut at Vidal folks. Sassoon, and they they did a very nice job of it. Uh, you know, uh, and uh, fifty but, bucks later. Yeah, but it was it cost me seventy five bucks a haircut. You know, but in those wow. days I had fuck you money, so what the hell? I get a seventy five buck haircut. But. Um, uh, as it started to go, I, I kept I kept I kept wearing it long on the sides, and, and after a while, you get that Danny DeVito look, you know. 
Where, where guys who oh. don't want to see their hair go will keep the stuff on the sides but make it long. And my, my friend, who was a comedian, Robert Schimmel, who's no longer with us, said to me, why don't you do what I do? And he was, you know, he lost all his hair on top. And I said, what's that? And I mean, I looked at his hair and I could see that he cut everything short around the sides. He said, you cut your hair on the sides as short as you possibly can. I said, yeah, but I'm going bald. I don't want to look balder. He said, no. He said, it's preemptive baldness. You don't look as bald when you cut your hair short on the side. You look bald when you let it grow long. And he was right. And ever since then, I've been cutting it short on the sides. And now I don't even give a shit about my hair. I just go down to Doofus with his clippers. And in five minutes, I'm out of there. And he's 12 bucks richer. Yeah. You know. Plus tip. Plus tip, I give him. I usually give him a five buck tip, a uh, four buck, three buck tip. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Mainly because well, I don't have fuck you money any longer. But even if I had fuck you money, I can see. You know, Albert's the first one who said it to me when I was working at Sirius and I was making a decent living. He said, "Why are you paying?" I was paying, I don't know, twenty five, thirty dollars for a haircut. He said, "I go to a place for like nine bucks." Come with me sometime. Tell me if there's a difference. And I went to his nine buck barber, walked out, and said it looks the same as it does from the thirty buck barber. When you go to the super cuts or the magic cuts, they got something that's like a flowbee. What it is is it's a regular clipper, and they put a uh, plastic tip on it, and the tips have different lengths. So they use uh, like a one and a three, and you know they go like this, and boom, you're out of there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But uh, yeah. But the, no, the thing is, when I, you know, if you've got a lot of hair on your head, like uh, Mike has a lot of hair on his head, uh, 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 yeah. Scott's got a lot of hair on his head, Kevin's, I hate all you guys, Kevin's got a, <laughs> got a lot of hair on his head, uh, Jeff's doing pretty good, and you, so therefore you do go to a decent, or a decent enough barber because it has to be styled. But when you right. get to my point, there's no styling involved, you know. They just uh, uh, you you go in there and they they do what they're going to do. See, I like the back to be really clean and, and nicely nicely done because I don't have much else. So you know, I, I want them to make it uh, look uh, tailored, and uh, you know that that's why I go to a, a better barber rather than somebody that just takes a pair of clippers yeah. and and wax it off. By the way, I'm thinking of, of just stopping the whole video deal altogether. Because I'm, I'm looking at the numbers this week, and they're just really low. Yeah. Is there another ball game? No, they're off today. Oh. Yeah, they're off today. There's no excuse. You know, uh, it was Fridays were special. Uh, Friday was the only day that it was televised or, or on Facebook or whatever. And uh, so it became, it became a special night. Now, uh, you know, every night's the same. And maybe uh, people are getting uh, complacent. I think they are, yeah. Yeah, I also think they're getting bored with this whole format. They must be punished. I have to. I, I have to find a new format. Dilly, dilly. Show. I have to find a new yeah. way to do this show. <laughs> um, Take him to the misery room. Dilly, dilly. Yeah, I was. Yeah. I'll tell you. In the last twenty-four hours, I've been bothered a little bit about uh, this guy Halpern. Um, who, oh, the uh, yeah. another is that one of the chest of the molesters guys? Mm -hmm. uh, no, no, another, yeah. you know something. See, that's the problem. Mm -hmm. he, he, six, five women came forward and said they had been sexually harassed by him. None of them said that he raped them. None of them said that he. They even didn't even say they. He pawed them. You know, uh, he may have just come on to them. Yeah. You know, and, I, and this is and, getting overplayed. It's Mark Halpern, and um, uh, I, I feel bad for him, and I feel bad for him because he's being caught up in what is now the new McCarthy era. This is the witch hunt. You know, and anybody. Either, I mean, they even went after George Bush Senior, who, well, who said he in his that. wheelchair supposedly <laughs> grabbed women's <laughs> asses. Now he said, "I'm in the wheelchair." It, it was just my way of of being, uh, you know, a, a ninety year old capacious guy. I don't think he meant. No, no. What, what they said was is that when you're in a wheelchair, and I don't know this. Uh, if, if we had uh, Patrick here tonight, he could answer the question for us. 
he said uh, that your hand naturally goes to the sides, you know, over over the the, the seat handles. And, uh, you know, I may have touched them there, you know, or if I wanted to be nice and say they're there or, you know, good to see you, I might have padded that area because that's the only area I could get to. But he uh, apologized. Uh, uh. He apologized if anybody was bothered by that behavior. Well, you know, I mean, I just think it's gotten to the point now where they're outing all these guys because they were acting in a flirtatious manner. Let's put it that way. What, what one person calls uh, har harassment is flirtatious. Let's not demean. Let's not. What's the word I'm looking for? That it's would make not to me. Let's like not. Let's not. Let's. Let me hold on a second. I'm trying to think of the word. Let's not uh, minimize the uh, uh, Roger Ailes of the world. Let's not minimize the Bill Cosby's. Let's not uh, minimize uh, the uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, Weinstein's. Weinstein's by suddenly making every guy. Whoever got flirtatious, uh, a guy who harasses women. Imagine I'm, if George Burns was uh, was alive today. You know the way he used to joke. Uh, they they'd call him uh, a molester. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. it, and they probably accuse him of it. I mean, I think it's gotten to the point now where this is getting going a little overboard and is is shall we say cheapening. The the other instances where this kind of uh, ire is 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 warranted, okay. Uh, and uh, when I read this whole thing about Mark Halpern and it happened what two thousand eight, and uh, nobody ever said he raped me, nobody said he uh, you know did anything. He probably came on to them, and um, I guess that's you know as a guy. You, you know, I always often said the horrible thing about being the guy is you have to initiate. You know, because uh, women were not initiators; guys were the initiators. And sometimes exactly. there was a time, you know, where if guys didn't initiate, if guys didn't weren't flirtatious towards you, you would go to the bathroom to see if he had spinach on your teeth. You know, <laughs> so I mean, um, how far do we allow this thing to go? Uh, and I think Halpern, what? And, and, and Megan is actually throwing gas on the fire too. That's because she needs the uh, she needs the viewers. Yeah, she does. <laughs> what, what did she do? Well, she had that thing the other day where she told the stories about. Yeah, and then she went on and you know embellished up the Riley thing on uh, was it Colbert the other night? She uh, what was the comment she made? It kind of pissed me off. I mean, I'm. Uh, I don't argue all this stuff and it, you know, what's, you know, Weinstein is deserving of what he gets, but you're right. It's getting a little bit too petty and she's throwing, you know, gasoline on the fire by saying, well, every time a guy looks at our asses, then that shouldn't be done, you know? And that's, that's throwing gas on the fire. I think years ago, my ex-wife, uh, Susan, we were in Italy at, Oh no, it was Ronnie. It was Ronnie. We were in Italy, and she had to go into the train station there in, uh, I can't remember where we were. It wasn't Rome, but it was in a major Italian city because there was something that she was having sent to her for her to pick up or something. I can't remember what the, but she came back and she said, boy, does my ass hurt. And I said, what do you mean? She says, I've never been pinched so many times in a short yeah. period of time in my life as walking through that train station. Mm -hmm. That was considered common behavior, yeah. you know? Now, I can't say that I countenance it. I would never do it. I would never see a reason to do it. Uh, yeah. But, you know, uh, uh, you know, you have to, you have to, uh, the question is, uh, excuse me, folks, I'm gonna have to fix my camera. Uh, it froze up on me, so I'm gonna, get it going here but anyway you have Halpert to, hmm? looks like a young version of uh weinstein uh no he doesn't same oh come on small well, eye. halpern's a pretty good looking guy you know 
He's only 50. So what did he do? I, did, I didn't. I didn't read about it. Well, I mean, he was. He, 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 he had four or five accus accusations, and he yeah. fessed up to it right away and said he was going to go get it fixed or whatever. And it's. I think he's just trying to make it go away. Well, I. I just don't think he needs to. No, uh, it, uh, you know, I. I don't. He's getting dragged into it. Yeah, he, I mean, he, now he has to go, and I'm going to go to some kind of. Uh, health you know hospital yeah. or whatever and i'm gonna uh, deal with this thing uh i'm sorry you know you you did uh, something inappropriate a couple of years ago and maybe it wasn't even you know the question is was it inappropriate at the time you know the mores of the society change continually and they're they're evolving uh, and uh, while I would have never engaged, I don't know what the behavior was he engaged in even. You know, they, they if, if really I knew. Said. I, yeah, well, yeah. So, uh, uh, oh, it said that uh, he uh, he had pressed, he had, he had leaned against someone who was sitting down and his penis was in his pants and uh, made touched the, their shoulder. And uh, the other one was uh, somebody came in to his office he kissed her, a young woman, and he touched her boobs. Uh, this is this was the other one's complaint that I read. On, uh, I, I think help. it's a valid complaint, don't you? Well, uh, you know, did he just touch the boobs or did he flick well, them well, side to side? Look, did you he know, flick the nipple? Let, yeah. Let me yeah. put let me put it this way. Or was he I, just touching I, it when she I, was? Kissing? I think what, as I say, to one woman is harassment. To another, might be considered flirtation. It depends yeah. on the person it happens to. You're wrong to do it in any event. But what I'm saying right. is, is the these were his. If this was the worst he did, uh, he's a poor man's Weinstein. You know, I mean, he's he's oh, he's, a, he's at the bottom of the food chain. Well, yeah. maybe maybe he really wanted Corey Feldman. <laughs> <laughs> But you know what I don't get either, too? When it's I made it to all the big wigs. Yeah. <laughs> I'm he probably can't even go out of his house now. Um, ah. he's, not, he's out in every way. He's suing, <laughs> he's suing his own company now. What? Well, he's suing them because he, he wants um, his email and uh, telephone messages which they won't turn over to him because he says the email will exonerate him. Oh, you know, Matt, can you imagine if he's innocent in some of this? It well, I, uh, look, if he, let me put it this way. If I his mean, behavior was only confined to one of the 50 women who have complained, let's just say the That's other enough. 49 are lying. That's it's enough. still wrong. It's yep. enough. You know, but I don't like to see a guy like Halpern, um, uh, he hey, he apologized for his actions. He said what he did was wrong. And how much do we make him have to suffer as a result of this? He knows he did wrong. He said, I'm sorry. And he'd like to get on with his life. Nobody's complaining past 2008, so obviously he saw the error of his ways early. That's true. You know? You know, this this kind of behavior was made. It wasn't condoned, but it happened. It looks like it was so rampant in Hollywood that. Well, this uh, is in Hollywood. Though. This is in this is in Hollywood, Phil. Well, in the you know no, in L.A. No, 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 this is in L.A. Why not? Because Halpern worked out of New York. Oh, uh, okay. Well, well, then maybe that. And he wasn't in the. It wasn't in the movie business. Oh, and, and well, he, no, but he was in the uh, a political thing, and no, he wasn't. He was in the TV business, uh, but you know, basically, it, he and and uh, John Heilman, who is his is his is his partner in crime, yeah. uh, who I had on my show a couple of times, um, uh, were basically they were reporters for the New York Times, who then wrote a book uh, a, called Game Change, which was about the election of. Uh, Back Clinton. in with no with the no with the um, you know with oh. the ch chads and all of that you know that whole oh, Bush yeah 
Yeah, uh, and, and that, uh, you know, they wrote a book on that, which got made into an HBO movie. And by the way, HBO was going to make a movie out of their latest book about the Trump campaign, but they have now canceled it because of the sexual harassment charges made against him. Nobody's taking, going to take him to court. He probably never will see the inside of a courtroom. He will never have the cops showing up at his door and putting him in handcuffs. But his career is ruined. But his career is ruined by insinuation. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, uh, he apologized, which I give him credit for. But by apologizing, he then admits guilt. And by admitting guilt, it gave HBO the ammunition it took and it's only HBO trying to look good, so they don't. Oh, we're, we don't countenance this kind of behavior at HBO. Well, he didn't goose any of your secretaries, okay? You know, uh, and I just think it's a little bit. Scott, how do you feel about this? Because you seem to have, always have a different approach on this deal. But I, don't you think that uh, uh, whatever happened to the art of forgiveness, especially when somebody apologizes? Well, I have three daughters, and I wouldn't want anybody to touch them in any way that they didn't initiate. Yeah, well, right? I know, and I, I, I can say I would not. You know, I don't want anyone to walk into my daughter's office and kiss her on the cheek. Okay, mm-hmm. she's an engineer; she don't get that, and that's that's not going to happen. I don't right. want them to, you know, stare at her ass, but they're going to do that. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. I meant, and that's you know, your fault uh, because a, you created. Yeah, because it's, it's your. It's your. Yeah. It's so your. Anytime a woman says something against a man, I, I, I believe it. Now, well, now they're going after Ellen DeGeneres. Uh, I like you. And uh, Katie He's making a joke. Well, uh, yeah. Well, I guess uh, you know it's going. Uh, it's going uh, full circle. I, I just think that we Let's have see. to be. It's getting to the point where we're, uh, this is happening too often uh, for us to suddenly not say, well, Jeff, maybe you, what do you want to say? Well, I, th- I think one of the things that we maybe need is, is more people, and, and, and those people happen to be women, that have to establish what the, what the new standards are because they certainly have changed in the last two, three years. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily personally, but where everybody knows about it now. Okay, is, but if we... This is not a one-on-one... I, I get what you're saying, but it, there's a social seed change, is what you're saying. But that yeah. seed change didn't exist in 2008. And had, had, no. had uh, Halpern, for instance, in 2008 been aware of this seed change that was going to happen, what, almost 10 years later, then perhaps he would have comported himself in a slightly better manner. Now, I, I, you know, I don't feel, in a way, I don't feel sorry for Halpern because with all the uh, power that I had at one time in my career and all the women that I've had sex with, okay, I never, ever acted inappropriately. I never acted in a way that would make a woman feel uncomfortable. That was always my greatest fear, that if I, if I came on too hard or whatever, I would make them feel uncomfortable. So I understand, you know, that I wouldn't have done that. But I do understand that because the, the social zeitgeist, ooh, there's a good word, the social ooh. zeitgeist uh, of the time... Uh, allowed a lot of men to to, to be that way. Uh, I always considered it inappropriate when I was, uh, you know, 35 years old. I always hated guys who talked about women in a kind of sexually provocative manner because I didn't think yeah. that was respectful. But that was me. But the, uh-huh. the zeitgeist of the times, the tempo of the times was not that, Okay. Uh, I just simply had my own code of ethics, and I lived by them. And I was taught to them by my father. You know, it says you always treat women with respect, and you always treat them. And, and I, so I always had a fear about making a woman feel uncomfortable. And speaking of making a woman feel uncomfortable, here's the chick in the room, the babe, the hot, the hottie. Hey, Renee. No. 
<laughs> Getting a little inappropriate there right now, Alex. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, you know, I, listen. I've had seventy-seven years to lead up to being accused of being ha harassing. <laughs> you know. Uh, well, so the issue is, is I have really bad bandwidth, and it's getting windier, and so I don't know how long I can stay on. I've been listening this entire time. Yeah. You, you guys, you're not. You're not women. There's two things here. One is you guys, you men that I see here. It, minus no that's not true in this case um need to be our allies and that's not what we see you, we need you to when one of your buddies opens their mouth and says something stupid sexist against a woman in any way shape or form we need you to speak up and do a dope slap or I'm not going to stand for it, or just a, you know what that was not called for. You need to do that. And with the holidays coming well, up, well, I got news for you. I got news for you, Renee. I've been doing that all my life. I've been calling right, guys. I've been calling right. guys out you know, when they you, acted you once got on me, Alex. You once got on me because I uh, made fun. Uh, I, I took a news story off the AP thing and it was about a 600 uh, pound guy that they couldn't get out of the room. And I thought it was funny. And you said, I don't make fun of fat people. And, uh, you, you, you know, you chided me and said, you know, don't do that. No, it's not, a, it's not a story. Uh, you know, want to read, even though I, I grabbed it off the AP machine, uh, uh, you, you stood up and you said, no, you don't make fun of fat people. Well, I, so I, I, that's, I, I, that's an indication of, you know, because uh, I never made fun of women in front of you, so uh, you know, I, I has no reason. Just, well, he never had any reason to chide me over that. Hey, but, look, it's know, morals. Wow. Not at all. But that I, I say correct. that Alex showed his uh, what he's talking about, uh, w whether it was fat people or women or anything else. He didn't stand I've, for I've that always, shit. I've always, if I ever felt I was with a bunch of guys and they were all of a sudden they were doing this about women and that about women, I would always chime in and say, knock it off, guys. You know, yeah. treat them just with some respect. With, yeah. the fat, uh, with the fat story. Yeah. yeah. And, and this goes, I'll tell you, the, it also happened with the whole AIDS thing. I remember I was doing the show and AIDS came out and... Comedians love to use AIDS as a joke because yeah. it was somehow to them it was funny. And one day I'm watching television and I see a guy with AIDS and he's got Carposi's sarcoma all over his body and he's going to die. And I came in the next day and I said, there's a new rule on this show, guys. No AIDS jokes. Uh, because you know, because when uh, you make AIDS uh, jokes, what you're doing is you're making gay jokes. I had, I had a character called Bruce Century. And and I did it as, with a gay accent. And you told me, don't do it as gay because you're not gay. And, uh, yeah. you know, accent. again, you know, uh, you, you stood up for your morals. Well, I... What, so I what's, yeah. what's a gay accent for fuck's sake? Oh, well, you know, it's an affected <laughs> accent. You know, like, uh, uh, you know, an effeminate Believe affected Believe me, accent. if you hear a guy who's gay do it, you know he's gay. Okay? Right. I mean... Yeah. Uh, and, and so... And, and uh, just this, like, I'll tell you, there's... there's it, all cops sound alike. Because, <laughs> really, I just, there's what I call the, there's the cop accent. The cop it accent. Like cop it, it, what well, it is is it's it's a thing that people do to create identification. In other words, if I'm if I'm a if I'm a gay male, and I want to come on to somebody, I'd like to have some kind of clue that they're gay too. Otherwise, I shouldn't come on to them. And so, that, therefore, you will affect certain things in order to put that point across. Yes, Kevin. Yeah, but but that's, stereo Kevin? that's stereotyping. And, and, and if an example of that would be, I had a, I had a person that I worked with, mm -hmm. and he had the quote-unquote gay accent. He, you know, fluttered around or whatever you want to call it. And I thought for sure he was gay, which didn't bother me until I found out he had a family. He had a, a boy and two girls and a wife that was a nurse. And I went, holy shit, you know, I was They're right. I was but maybe he is like, gay. Maybe I'll he tell was you, I, when I was growing up, I mean, I, uh, I, I, I've I mean, told, I've I mean. told this story before that a lot of people assumed I was gay, mainly because I was uh, I was wanted to be an actor 
and uh, yeah, you know, I and vote. and, yeah. and uh, I didn't I didn't play sports. I went to the ballet with my father, you know, and things like oh, that. And, yeah. and and at school, they used to think I was what are you a fag or something, you know? And I That's finally I got to the point where when people would ever ask me what are you gay or something, like it was in a nasty way, I'd look back at them and say yes. Well, that tutu <laughs> just that you to used to wear gave you away. Yeah, just to make them... Well, it's, it also has to do with the change. You say the change of times. You know, look back when the girl would walk by the construction site and everybody whistled and she would turn around and give him a big smile. Well, that was... Yeah. It was almost accepted back then, but it's yeah. changed. Jeff had his hand up. Yeah, uh, one, the first thing that I, I remember about, about a gay guy and... Uh, and and the question was whether or not he was gay or not, yeah. and and uh, this I was with this girl, and it was uh, a party at her uncle's house, mm -hmm. and it was in Brooklyn, and it was a a small place, but it was very nice, and uh, I said at the end, I said, you know, I I said I realized these guys are gay. Because he was there, and he had his partner there, too. Right. He goes, how do you know that you're gay? This is, you're just full of shit. You're making this up. It's not true. And I said, well, they still sleep in the same bed, right? <laughs> Well, you know, I'll tell you what happened with me when I was when, when, when I was first Did you when burst I, his bubble. When I, when, I, when I first was starting out, I wanted to be an actor. And so I would do a lot of uh, theatrical stuff. And most of the guys uh, involved in it were gay. Uh, and I had a director once who was gay. And finally, mm -hmm. he, he, I came in one night and one day uh, for rehearsal or something. He says, you're looking really good today. And I said, thank you. He says, uh, you aren't gay by any chance, are you? And I said, no, I'm not. But, you know, and then I, I pulled my old line about, but if I ever become gay, you'll be the first one I call. Yeah. Uh, and and, but, and, and then, I, the and then, so, you somebody, the so, then somebody said to me, oh, how would you feel about the fact that, you know, you had this gay guy tell you were looking really good that day? And I said, terrific. It's a compliment. Who gives a shit? You know, yeah. it's a compliment. So I never had... I mean, I, my, when I was growing up as a kid, my parents had these two friends who came over all the time. And uh, I was still a kid at the time. And they would always come over and then they would leave and they'd come over the next time and everything. Finally, one day I said to my father, I said, what is the relationship between those two people? And he said, they're gay. They're a gay couple. And, and he explained to me what a gay couple were. And I went, oh, okay. I like them. They were nice. It never changed my opinion of them, but it did it did inform my attitude about gay people uh, to where I never was bothered by whether somebody was gay or not. And yep. when people would say, well, what, are you gay or something? I would say yes, because I knew they were saying it to be insulting. They were going to make an insult about me because they thought I was gay. And I just didn't want them. I wanted to take all the juice out of it by going, yeah, I'm gay. Well, you want I suck, just tell him guess. You, you want you want to suck my dick? You know, I mean, <laughs> that was the only way to handle it. But what I'm saying is that we have to take into account what we call the seed change, what we uh, the times, the zeitgeist. The times do change. The morals change. I mean, we don't treat women today like we treated them in the 1800s, okay? Because times have changed, the morals have changed, the attitudes have changed, women have stood up for themselves, you know? We can go on and on. So do we apply, I, you know, I, I, I think Weinstein is a creep because at least 15 to 20 years ago, he should have come to the realization that what he was doing was wrong. And he never came to that realization. He was allowed to get away with it, though. It, it, well, it, it, I'm not blaming the people. Just, just like O.J. got away with it uh, and, and made him even more uh, uh, well, apt to, to do other I, something. Wait a minute. I, Phil, you're making no sense at all. Okay. No, no, and no. The fact, is, the fact is, the fact is, I am not going to blame the people at Weinstein's company or the people around him who didn't speak up. Weinstein. It's not it's not their job 
although people you, close you to you are blaming the women that won the oscars because they kept their mouth shut why they knew it you blame them no, i i did I, I didn't blame them i said how but how you know how how dare they come down on this guy like they did because they uh, because they right. didn't mind it when harvey paid good hard sure. cash out of his pocket to get them to win the academy awards and believe it or not that's how you win an academy award you buy the votes uh, yeah. And, you know, I, I, I'm not trying to. I have to back up Alex on that point with the actresses, Renee, and I'll tell you why. Like when Clooney, I don't want to just, you know, I'll just look at Clooney and Streep and all of them. They're all tweeted out, like, you know, we don't stand for this, which is all fine, but it's almost like to me they're doing it to protect their brand. He's got a new film coming out, so I got to do the right thing now so people may go see it. Well, I, he should have did it like Alex said years ago. But he's yeah. doing business with him, so we got to keep it hush hush. He bought and paid. It, it he, 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 he bought and paid for an Academy Award for Meryl Streep. He bought and paid for an Academy Award for, I mean, for Jennifer sad. Lawrence. He bought and paid for an Oscar for Judy, for Judy Dench for a thirty-second appearance in a movie. Yeah, she got Best Supporting Actress. So, I mean, these are people who, on on one hand, t took the advantages of Harvey Weinstein, <laughs> and and I'm telling you. This whole attitude that Streep had, that she didn't know what was going on, is the I biggest, is the best she acting, is the best acting job she's ever done. Okay. I agree with I that. She's terrible. I agree with that. Good, good I like the Tarantino statement. I mean, that was a good statement. So I agree. I agree. You're right. I had forgotten the entire thing that Alex had said about about the women who won the awards. But I do like what uh, Tarantino just came out and, and uh, said. Well, I mean, uh, Weinstein literally, I think, produced every film that Tarantino ever made. Oh, yeah. he, 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 uh, you know, and so he had a great loyalty to him. And even though his girlfriend, Mira Sorvino, one of the women who's standing up now, told him the story about what Weinstein had done to her, uh, you know? he still was in a state of denial, which today he says, I feel very guilty about because I shouldn't have been if I had been a decent person I would have stopped working with Harvey Weinstein and there were people who did like uh, what's her name uh, 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 Brad Pitt's former wife Angelina Jolie oh, I like when she Jolie. When, when she found when she found out about this she said I just decided I uh, or maybe he even came on to her I would Super. never work with Weinstein Super. again I, I respect her but yet a lot of these women who did have these problems did go back and work for Weinstein again. That's the point. Well, I see Rose McGowan is the person who was in uh, multiple movies of, of Tarantino. So it's, it, but she came out against him saying that he actually raped her. Ooh. So the timelines between when, when Tarantino found, acknowledged this, when he didn't, because that movie, what was that, Roadhouse, whatever? Movie that was a long oh, grind time house, ago. Grindhouse, Grindhouse. That yeah, thing. Yeah. Uh, uh, and you know that she, Rose McGowan, was probably trying to listen to her director, but her director's boss is trying to bang her. And oh. and was that all happening during Grindhouse? Well, all I'm saying is, is that a lot of these women went back and kept working with him or kept trying to get jobs with him in spite of the fact that they had gone through this horrendous experience. And, and I think that it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's wrong. You know, what, what, everything Weinstein did was wrong. But up to a point, you have to say, hey, it was the way things were done in Hollywood, and there was no seed change back then, and there was no change in mores back then, and you got to go all the way back to the 40s when Louis B. Mayer was banging every starlet in the, in the studio and, and, and also was molesting Shirley Temple, for Christ's sake. Oh, my God, you know. Shirley Temple. Disgusting. Uh, oh, oh, tr try, try a guy who's still alive, Kirk Douglas, who's re reportedly, uh, literally raped a 15-year-old Natalie Wood. You know, Dad, you told me that. I, I hope he drops dead for that. Really. Well, he, I, he's still if he, living. If he, I can't take it. I, if he drops I, dead now, he still lived too long. Okay. Exactly. Only the good die young. It's so true, but not us. The family that's, denies that's, it. That's, that's terrible. The family denies it, but it's pretty well one of those. She had a hard life. Hollywood man. lies. It's the truth. What? 
She had a rough life, Natalie Wood. No, she didn't. Well, she so died so young, though. I think they killed her, Alex. My mother thinks she was murdered. Who knows I what happened so, to her? Was, we were just So you guys were just talking about the... Um, the Kennedy oh, papers yeah. have been released about the assassination. And that's a conspiracy, a set of conspiracy theories in itself. Isn't there a set of cons uh, at least one cons conspiracy theory in regards to Natalie Wood's death? There are. There, they said they were it, fighting, it, right, Alex? Uh, and, 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 uh, 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 who, know, who knows what went on there? All they know is that Natalie Wood was deathly afraid of water. Uh, she had a great fear of water. Know. And... Uh, Yet she well, got supposedly got in a boat and, you know, went out. Two to the, ice hmm? fell into a bucket of milk. Oh, stop. How can he mix this into Natalie Wood? She's a legend. Well, Christopher Walken. <laughs> oh, Christopher Walken. Yeah, they said he was, he, weren't they like having like, he was jealous or something? He was like, you know, you can, you can sit around and try and figure that one out, but I don't think anybody will ever know the truth in that matter. And, you know, a, and uh, Kirk Douglas either. That's hard. Uh, the Kirk Douglas story is supposedly, uh, you know, the, the, um, who was it? There was some actor that actually uh, published the story uh, and, and said that it was, you know, it was, it was absolutely true. Uh, and, uh, you know, he, uh, it, but that's the way business was done in Hollywood for years. And it was wrong. Yeah. Right, but but that was a long time ago. Weinstein is our generation. Well, but I so want to know. Okay, off. here's what we're not getting a list of: What's that? the females <clears throat> in power who have used that power to get laid. Okay, Thank you. Uh, I agree with that uh, because I, you know, uh, I'm trying to think: has it ever happened to me? No, not really. Uh, but uh, I know people it has happened to guys. It has happened to where they felt compelled to have sex with the boss because she was the boss, you know. Uh, and uh, it, it's, it, you know, I mean, all I'm saying is is that a guy like Halpern I feel sorry for because in 2008, um, his behavior... It was behavior, still against the law. Well, I, uh, well, but we don't know to what extent it, 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 it happened. He it, ended it, up against somebody that was sitting down and his crotch touched her back shoulder and whether that yeah, was it now what now did they say it was intentional or was it by accident they didn't say one way or another they yeah. said that was the action that the com she's complaining about you know uh, it was the, it was his penis in front of the crotch you know but it was well, a, well, yeah. how far was it sticking out it was in his pants. Maybe I don't know. Maybe he had a hard on. You know. It was ten. He's probably trying to rub against somebody. Well, he was. I mean, of course he was. Rubber. Well, no, 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 wait, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're making that assumption, Scott. You know. The perv. Your crotch accident. That's terrible. Really. Something else. Shoulder. I don't want to make a joke. Yes, man. I love. I love Scott. He could have. He could have. He could have. He could have been pushing the chair into the table, and he used no, his uh, used his waist to, to kind of push it. You know, well, I don't want to brag. But my penis has always had a hard time not touching people. But anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah, but you're not going chasing him. They're coming after you. This guy's running around the office. Well, all I'm saying is, is that I I, I just think that too many Sarah, people are being you, you know a let's these people can't kissing her. her. When you when you suddenly are getting to this Mark Halpern situation. You're cheapening. You're cheapening every woman who has a complaint against Harvey Weinstein a little bit. Yeah. Hang you know? on a second. So how? Let's take a let's take a raise of hands. How many men are have ever had their penis touch a woman's shoulder that has absolutely in, in public? So we're not talking about at home what you're doing with your girlfriend right. or your wife or whatever. We're talking about in public. Has your dick ever touched a woman's shoulder? Well, one day I was on a ladder and. <laughs> <laughs> this is insane. I mean, no. how I was dancing with a woman once and got a hard on. You know, I'm I mean, <laughs> I'm all for what? 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 What did you say? What did you, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on a second. I love, I love Scott's outrage. Yes, Scott. What? What, what kind of dancing were you doing that you rag your cock on the woman's shoulder? I believe we were doing the foxtrot. The foxtrot. 
Yeah. Really? Insane. Really? It was dirty you're, dancing. No, it was she hoping no one puts baby in a corner. You're going to jail. That's yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that, okay, he harassed me by putting me in the corner. Yeah, put your cock in your pants and go home. <laughs> That's what we tell you. Well, you know, the, I, I guess, I guess the thing the thing that worries me is I went out with I went out with a lot of them. Okay, and and a lot of them were just quick little things, and other times they were long lasting relationships. But uh, I, I uh, uh, in thinking back, I wonder if those same things I was doing then today, somebody could claim, you know. Yes. No. But they were always going after you. You know, even though, I, even though I, even though I, can tell you with perfect assurity that I was never improper with a woman. Okay, well, you're a I never I pushed. I never pushed it because I didn't want to make somebody feel uncomfortable, as I've said before. But still, that doesn't mean that somebody can't claim whatever they want to claim. And if I was alone in a room one night and the two of us had sex and it was purely consensual, she could walk out of that room and tell the rest of the world I raped her. And who's, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, that I raped her and who is to, uh, uh, you know, who are you going to believe? There are two people in a room alone. Nobody else is there. Who are you? Who are they going to believe? Have you, they're going to believe the woman. So there's you guys are. So there's a hashtag going around saying call saying me too. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's women who have been assaulted, sexually assaulted or whatever vi- law that somebody has crossed against them. And all they do is tweet out me too. Mm-hmm. Alex, stop taking this personally. The issue is, is that we want all people to feel that they have, all women to feel that they have a voice. And if there's something there, we want you to shout out so that when there's little girls around, your grandkids out there, when there are young women around, that they know that they've got a voice and that, well, that okay. is illegal and, against and, them and, and they and, can and, go to the police. And that's, uh, and, and that's uh, very nice and all well and good, uh, Renee, but uh, I had a situation once, uh, twice actually, in which I was, I could say, raped by a woman. Oh by a woman. Okay. Me too. Okay, wait a minute. Let me finish. Let me finish. Every time I ever mention this to anybody, the women go, well, how could you be raped? No, but see, you're you're somebody who needs to fess up to that, and your text should say, me too, because you can rape a man, and, you, and women well, need I'm to glad, know that. Well, I'm glad that you feel that way, but every time I ever told this story, okay, on the radio or anywhere else, people would go, oh, well, you're a guy. You couldn't be raped. Oh, you want to you wanna bet? A guy can be in mortal fear of his life and get an erection. In fact, he might get an erection just from being frightened. How are we talking about... <laughs> or waking up in the morning. Hey, you know, uh, let's say you're in a long-term relationship with somebody. You, uh, and, uh, you know, one person, it's time to go to bed. And one person's horny. The other one isn't. You say uh, to the woman, hey, uh, you know, I'm horny. And she says, well, you know, I don't really feel like it tonight. But she acquiesces because uh, and uh, because she's you know she wants to please you. Is that is that rape? You know no, no, uh, because no. uh, to me rape you know, to me rape is a violent act. Okay, or, or uh, maybe not rape. Is that a unwanted uh, 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 action? So, for instance, these people are in a relationship. One of them's horny, one of them's not. Maybe it's the woman that's horny and wants uh, wants some action, uh, and uh, you know, uh, and they and they just they acquiesce just to just to please well, the other Renee, person. Well, Renee, what do you it, think? What do you think, Renee? Renee, what fucking state do you live in will determine whether or not you have rights in that case, and you should thank every Republican talking, for I'm, that. I'm not talking legally. I'm talking morally. Yeah. No, we're talking legally here. Well, and that's what all of this is about. When you say that you're tired of hearing about women doing this stuff, almost everything you're saying has a legal boundary. So, so therefore, it, not just a, a long term couple or a married couple, one wants, one doesn't want. What uh, state do you live in? Well, I'm in it, California. What, 
but if, uh, we'll see then what are this what is the legality for the two marriage for a married couple in the state of california uh, married women have no rights uh okay lived in Georgia, it might be something different. But because you live in California, it's one thing. But the sheer fact that and this is that not nationwide is just an incredible show. If it was Georgia, you, it's a cousin. So, you know, there uh, you, you can't wow. do it. <laughs> well, all, all, all I'm saying is, is many times when I told that story, especially a few years ago, like maybe 10, 15 years ago, because the thing mm -hmm. happened about eh, maybe 15, 20 years ago, the one that I remember the most, which was uh, a woman who I allowed to stay overnight. And uh, she said, do you want to have sex? And I said, no, because I'm very depressed. I just broke up with my girlfriend and I don't want to, I really don't want to. And I go to sleep. Next thing I know, uh, I'm feeling a woman blowing me. And I look down and all of a sudden she's hopping on top of me. And I just, I started to cry. Isn't that revenge I, sex? No, it wasn't yeah, revenge. You know it wasn't horny. revenge sex. She was horny. She uh, wanted to get fucked. And I told her that I didn't want to have sex. I said that ahead of time. And you and know yet, what? yeah, you have tra this is a trauma. It, it's a, it was a violation of, of you physically, mentally, and legally. And I'm sorry that it happened to you. And maybe you do need to talk to somebody about it because I, it's I don't, still. I, I, let me put it this way. I don't. Th okay. Okay. Let me let me give you a, a, a reason why it didn't bother me as much as it would say bother you, because I'm a guy. Now the reason it doesn't bother me is because uh, unless you're gay, uh, guys don't get penetrated, and the act of penetration is everything. It is a sense of being invaded. Okay, if you will. And so when a guy rapes a woman, it has an entirely different psychological uh, effect on that person as, uh, as a guy uh, being raped by a woman who is forcing herself on him. But there's not that act of penetration. Do you get what I'm saying? Penetration is, is a, a very big psychological factor here. Okay, so hold on a second. So there's a state in Oklahoma, or excuse me, there's a, a law in Oklahoma that if a woman is passed out with her mouth open, that any male can ejaculate in her mouth while she's passed That's out, true. and it's not against the law. So well, can go they, 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 never, they never put their, their dick in her mouth, but they just ejaculate. So isn't she being violated whether or not it's penetration? Hell yes. And so, by the way, that's I a can't recent believe that that's a law. law. Absolutely. It's I can't recent believe that. law. It is, it's within the past couple of years. That's how yep. sad it is. Uh, that's, look yeah. it up. It's true. I yep. remember that. I swear. And so what you can do is you can go out in, in that state. You can get some GHB. You can drug her, and, and you and you can drug her. You can invite all of your friends open over, and 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 when she opens her mouth, they can every one of them can just do that to her. And would you like to know how this law came about? Well, how? Because it was two cops that did it to her. It was two police officers. I seem that to were vaguely untried. remember that. I don't know though if they ruled in their favor though. They did. They did. That's amazing. Yeah. 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 And, 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 and the women who voted for Trump, honey, women, we were barely holding this place up, but we were trying, and all you did is tear us down. So those laws that you think that I was just talking about is archaic, it's not just in Oklahoma. There's one other state that has it. So thank you. Yeah, but all I'm, all, I'm, all I'm trying to say is that unless you're gay and then we're talking about anal sex there uh there it's isn't the violent. act uh, guys are not inv uh, are not penetrated in sex and so therefore that creates a whole different psychological framework you're working within that you're that when a woman is raped it's far more of a violation than if a guy is you get no, what i'm saying no it's the same isn't it the same law it's the same freaking law. It, it, well, it has nothing uh, you to know something? I seriously <laughs> doubt uh, that I could have, at least at that point, taken well, this, called the cops on this woman. Okay? They never and do that. Uh, And, uh, you know, all I'm saying is, is that what's happening here is we seem to be having a, uh, uh, what can we call it? It's it, it almost reminds me a little bit of a witch hunt that, 
You know, everybody who, you know, whoever went out with anybody, it should be in fear of the fact that one day they can now say, hey, he raped me or he harassed me. Harassing. You know, they didn't, nobody said <laughs> that Halpern raped them, okay, okay or, or had yeah, sex with them, but that he simply harassed them. And that is, okay. th that's ruining his career. HBO just dropped the contract for the movie. Uh, CNN said that uh, uh, wait a minute, it was uh, MSNBC, where he now is a contributor, uh, put him on waivers. Um, Why are you trying to? It seems to me you're a victim because, in all of this, and and you and you admitted it on on here, and you'd be a perfect person to do the Me Too as well, and you're also a good candidate to go to a psychiatrist or psychologist or a licensed clinical social worker and talk to them but you're still on his uh, on the guy's side of this I'm on the guy I'm only on the guy's side, side to this to this extent that there's been no legal action taken against him there's been no proof except the word of these women presented okay. and all of a sudden his career has been impacted because of this uh, uh, let's for a moment let me bring up uh, uh, what's his name O'Reilly O'Reilly claims that uh, if the truth be known that he didn't do any of these things. Now, <laughs> wait a minute, hold on a second. You can say whatever you want to. You weren't there, you don't know, and neither do I. No, I was just going to say he'd want to fuck him anyway, but go ahead. Well, I mean, <laughs> it, look, it has, this has in, spite right of, in spite of how I feel about him politically, and it's quite, quite, him sex. quite frankly, yeah. I'd like to see him get anally raped by any one of a number of guys, uh, the fact of the matter, well, I feel sorry for those guys. Uh, oh, yeah. uh, the fact of the matter is that that he feels, and he told the New York Times that this has been a witch hunt against him, and that these things, these most, uh, these claims are baseless. That all, anything that went on with he and women uh, were consensual, and so on. And yet, nobody, right. nobody is going to believe O'Reilly, least of all Fox, who got rid of him. Yeah, but and, and the point is, is he's trying to be the victim in all this. He, he's he's saying that the women were full of shit, and I'm the real victim here. Well, they, 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 yeah, they, they, he is yet to give a good explanation of why he forked out thirty two million dollars. Exactly. Uh, but That's uh, but she had. had and, right and, and and quite <laughs> frankly, I would say to any guys out there who might be accused of this, do not go in for the payoff. A lawyer will tell you, well, that's the easy way. Then we don't have to go to court and we don't have to go through de uh, years of litigation. But the fact is, the minute you pay them off, even if you just want to get the situation off your back and you didn't do it, but you want to get it off your back, uh, it, it's going to come back to bite you in the ass because they're going to say, why did you pay the $32 million? You know. Uh, yeah. Renee, damned if you do and damned if you don't. Yeah, Renee, I can't find anything on that, but I did find an uh, Oklahoma senator proposes making it illegal for men to ejaculate except into a woman's sexual organs. That's not a mouth. Now, so what I, may, I, I uh, there is nothing, absolutely I, nothing. I, I will be more than happy to look it up when I'm not using this much bandwidth for something else. So tomorrow I'll call in especially for that. I know where it is. I mean, I've seen it. I've read it. It was the judge that said it. It's disgusting. And it was two police officers. So I'll be more than happy to find it for you. Yeah. Um, uh, there was a police yeah, exactly. officer in Oklahoma arrested for raping women, black women. But other than that. Uh, Can you go like, I don't know, maybe the Oklahoma Times or something like that to see if you could find it or the National, I don't, the I don't Review, uh, Oklahoma City Police Officer Daniel Holtzclaw uh, what if he's innocent uh, it seems that uh, he's being charged with serial rape and has been sentenced uh, uh, and uh, the, the cop was in tears when he got caught so uh, anyway well, what, but what I'm saying here is the point I'm trying to make here I, I suppose is that People are having their careers ruined by insinuation and not by legal action. And uh, I, I think it's wrong, for instance, of MSNBC to put Halpern on waivers because he didn't do it at their, at, at their facility. He did it when he was at CNN, and that was in 2008. Uh, he didn't do it at HBO, and yet HBO is dropping his, his movie. All on, on inference, on say-so, 
but on not un, un, uh, you know uh, uh, unrefutable truth and 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 I just think there's something uh, Im- is lo- I find something immoral about treating a woman like these guys supposedly treated them. On the other hand, it's, I am also against treating anybody uh, with accusations and assuming it's those corporate accusations. CYA. Huh? Corporate, corporate yeah, CYA is yeah. all it is. Save your ass. It's CYLB. They're probably your legal going to the same thing over at HBO and every every place else. So therefore, uh, yeah, they're trying to distance themselves. Oh, they're trying to distance themselves from any legal action that might come against them. You know, right, uh, yeah. because if you, not- if CNN, if if MSNBC doesn't do what they do, they're afraid that then somebody will come against them and say, "Why are you letting this guy work there?" Or a contributor, uh, yeah. you, you go after the sponsors or whatever. But my point is. Come on, you know we live in a, in a land of of what we considered consider laws and propriety, and and, and even in the case of of Weinstein, f- let's first see the proof being proven in a court of law. Let's bust this guy. Let's go after him legally, and then when that happens, we can we can say all those things we want to say. Uh, and wouldn't, a, the, wouldn't a good lawyer hold that uh, undercover until something happened? That's the problem. Is that these these lawyers want to go out in front of cameras and 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 spill all the beans well, right off the bat? There are those people in this world who want the publicity, who who on an ancillary basis uh, uh, make their bones and and get known for it. And I think I can say one of them is Gloria Allred, uh, you know, who is always out there with the crying, oh, yeah. weeping woman, you know, who's trying to read this prepared statement and starts breaking into tears. Uh, and uh, while I think that Allred is doing a good job for her uh, clients, I do think that she's doing it more for Gloria Allred than anybody else. You know, and then she's got her daughter. Uh, I keep trying to remember her daughter's Lisa. name, Lisa Bloom, who does exactly the same thing. And they, tr- and by the way, Lisa Bloom, one of you know, one of her biggest clients was, uh, yeah, Harvey uh, Weinstein. Uh, she do- she dropped him, but he was one of her biggest clients. Uh, so you know, I mean. Uh, Every everybody's getting some something out of this, and the person who gets accused, you know, this is the kind of thing that some woman wanted to accuse me of it. You know, well, I have no career to ruin anymore. But you know, I put myself in that position because I was vulnerable. I have told you the story about the father who called me and said his daughter said I got got her pregnant. And I didn't even know the girl. You yeah. know. Uh, and I say girl because she was a girl; she wasn't a woman yet, and and uh, that one th- that that scared me. I had a, a situation that happened when I went to the Olympics, in which I was accused of hitting Lori Thompson, and everybody believed the story, which was coming from this crazy lady who was like her roommate at the Olympics, and I was literally kept in the basement of a building by the Coca-Cola police, if you can believe that. Um, uh, let me let me let me let me me finish can i finish the story phil Uh, Mm. i I was kept in uh, in, 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 there until Lori showed up so they could ask her if i hit her and she she said no alex wouldn't hit anybody and they then came down and apologized to me. But until but it she, it was nice that they took the steps wait, to protect uh, everybody until they got the story. Oh straight. no, they weren't protecting me. They were scaring the shit out of me. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. It must be tough. It's awful like that. Yes, especially when I didn't, you know, and <laughs> I wouldn't. Tough. And that's not my. I've never hit a woman in my life. I think once I, I open hand slapped my. Ex-wife Ronnie, when we got into a final fight on the last couple of days that we were together and she kept nagging and nagging and telling me this and everything that I'd done wrong and I just snapped and I slightly hit her on the cheek. That's the most I've ever hit a woman in my life and I've never, to this day, I feel guilty about it. You know, uh, is anyone familiar with that sheriff, uh, uh, the last sheriff of San Francisco? His last name started with an M. Uh, yeah. 
he was a supervisor and what happened was his wife and he had an argument she went next door and was talking to another woman she said the the wife said at that time that he hit her and uh and she was upset and uh then that woman went to the DA and uh he wasn't allowed to take the oath of sheriff for several months uh it seems that then his wife exonerated him but uh Wait, but it you was, know, but you, it was you are, hearsay. yeah but you know something so, i got to tell you was done. Uh, and i got to say this on behalf of guys everywhere when it's a case of he said she said she said will always be believed and trump he said right okay yes renee i forgot what i was going to say yeah. Oh, did you look up the Oklahoma thing? I'm gonna no. I have shit for bandwidth, so it's not gonna be until we cut until I stop gab netting. Mm. She has. That's whole, why I'm calling in is it's been really 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 windy, and so I would get half of a joke. Alex would start a joke. That's I would. Plus, I interrupt. They weren't that funny anyway. <laughs> yeah. And so that, I would actually end your broadcast like six minutes after the hour because I it would be that many gaps. Yeah. So it, it's been fun listening to you. Mine's been like that too. Yeah, man. But and everybody says, "Oh no, the wind, the weather never interrupts the internet." I'm like, it's so fun. yeah. God. Like all, all I'm all I'm saying is is that uh, uh, hold on a second, I got to do something here. Uh, you tab. I think if there's a male or a female that has been a, a victim of a crime, mm -hmm. I think. They need to seek out some guidance from somebody who's actually trained. I'm not saying go to your church. I'm saying find a licensed clinical therapist. I'm saying go to one of the schools that offer this. I'm saying talk to somebody who can help you through it. There's also a rape line. There's also conversation lines like that. But if you've been violated, then you need to speak out. And, and you're not going to get closure until you do, and you can just be like Alex, because he refuses to believe that that's not going to help him. Well, uh, uh, that's not, uh, I, you know, uh, all I'm saying is, is that I hate to see people be completely ruined by insinuation. And the, the more this thing has gone on, the less creditable a lot of the stories are. They get watered down. I think a guy like Weinstein should be taken to the woodshed. I think he should be sued by everybody he uh, he did wrong by. I think the police should check out and make sure that no laws were broken, and if they were, to arrest his sorry little ass. But That's as all we, we ask. As we go down the line, when we get to, you know, ex-president Elder Bush, I'm starting to go, you know, this is, this is going a little too far, you know. Why? We, stop touching us. If, if, if we're not related to you or married to you, just just keep your damn penis off our shoulders. I mean, seriously. <laughs> can I slap, it. can I can I slap it in your face? No. Oh, I okay. I'm sorry. Oh, wait, you know what I just did? I just harassed her. I'm sorry. You know, uh, uh, you gotta no. go. Me too with a hashtag. There you go. So stop it. Just <laughs> just stop thinking we want you to touch us if if we're not married to you or a significant others of ours We're, we don't we don't even think about it we do not think about sex as often as men do men think about sex what every 15 seconds i think the, the study goes women think of it in hours at my age if it's every at my off. age it's every 15 days okay yeah. so we we don't our lives don't run around we don't have that shit in our heads we don't even think about it so when you say something like that to us it's gonna stand out we know what that means we know why we've got those goosebumps yeah well, and by the way bill clinton is still a pervert so it doesn't really matter uh, uh, he's still a pervert i he's barely alive from what i can see you know he's Who cares? He croaks along you know <laughs> Uh, there was a there's a beautiful video we'll finish off with this there's a beautiful video out there and he, I think you can probably go online and find it which all former presidents were together at this function I can't remember what it was and uh, Clinton it was a fundraiser is for Puerto Rico Clinton, Clinton no, is giving for, uh, Clinton is up speaking and on one side is George Bush Jr. right and and on the other side is Barack Obama and as he's speaking, they both start looking at each other and start laughing. 
And everybody's trying to figure out what they were laughing about. But apparently it had something to do with Clinton. Either that or one of the other gave out with a fart. They don't know what that is. But oh, yeah. If you I get, thought Obama it, told a joke or something. If, if, <laughs> if, if you get it, if he, he couldn't. Clinton was speaking. So, That's, you yeah. know, but it, it, they both look at each other. And once Bush starts laughing first, then he looks over at Obama and Obama starts laughing. It's kind of a quiet laughing. It's not like it's, and nobody can figure out what the hell was going on there. But I wish somebody would so say. That I want to know more about that than who killed Kennedy, okay? Anyway. Hey, everybody, thank you so much for uh, for having joined us this evening. We appreciate the, uh, the uh, it was good good discussion. Jeff, thank you. Uh, and, and Phil Meyer. Uh, here, I'll put his name up here so you can all see it. There we go, Phil Meyer. Thank you. Uh, Tony Magno, thank you. Renee Collins from Hawaii, thank you for calling. Uh, Mike up there in Sacramento, Sacramento. Uh, Scott, I love, I love Scott. When he gets, oh, when he goes <laughs> mad, gets mad, he gets mad good. And of course, Kevin, good having you here tonight too. Uh, I think it's time for you all to wave goodbye and say goodbye to everybody. Bye bye. Anyway, that's our citizens panel for tonight. I'm going to hang up on all of them and uh, uh, get rid of uh, the uh, uh, get rid of the Skype line so that Jack and Amy can use it next on the uh, on the uh, intersection, which is next over most of this gabnet. After that, it'll be connections at one o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. I'm Alex Bennett. You're the highly impressionable viewing and listening audience. And I'll see you again tomorrow, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye. <laughs>